Hello and good afternoon and thank you for being here. I am pleased to have so many join us here at the Longenberger Alumni House today for what I hope you will find to be an informative and interesting presentation. I see several familiar faces here today including alumni, clients, and colleagues. Hopefully many more are able to join us remotely via F Facebook Live and or view this as a podcast. I was truly honored to have been invited to participate in the Buckeye Smart Central Ohio Speaker Series and I look forward to this experience with a sold out crowd. Before I begin, I would like to dedicate this presentation to Mrs. Marilyn Jenny, who I have known for nearly 10 years and who is a dear friend and supporter of the university, and in particular the College of Veterinary Medicine. She is also a member of the Oval Society. I was honored to hold the Bud and Marilyn Jenny Professorship in Equine Medicine for almost eight years before I became Dean. Marilyn is one of the most generous and kind people I have had the pleasure of knowing. I look forward to attending her book signing at the Amherst Library in Amherst, Ohio this Sunday, January 15th for her memoir titled, For Love of Animals, The Story of Marilyn Jenny. Thanks to Mrs. Techy Shackelford, also shown in the photo, and another dear friend and supporter for commissioning Mrs. Susan Sipple, who helped make this amazing book a reality. Marilyn could not join us in person, however, she is joining us via her first ever Facebook Live viewing. She will turn 95 on March 9th. Let's give Marilyn a big round of applause. Here is an outline of the topics I will briefly cover during our time together this afternoon. I'll first give a, uh, show a brief overview video of the college. I'll talk a little bit about the One Health Initiative and then move into the presentation on the power of a pet. I'll then discuss some of the community outreach and engagement we do here locally in Columbus and, Great, and Central Ohio as it relates to our outreach medicine program and our shelter medicine program. I'll then show a brief video of our students during their Oath in Action Day and then I'll talk a little bit about the remarkable students we have here at the Ohio State College of Veterinary Medicine and then provide some closing remarks before opening it for questions and answers. As a way to jumpstart this session and familiarize everyone with the Ohio State College of Veterinary Medicine, I will play a short video that highlights some of the many activities and contributions of our college to our communities, the state, the country, and around the world. Animals. We are awed by their diversity and inspired by their beauty and intelligence. We are touched by their tenderness and amused by their antics. We rely on them for food, for work and transportation, for therapy and for companionship. We are nothing like them and everything like them. Animals and people. Our histories and our futures are inextricably linked. A fact understood and advanced by the Ohio State University College of Veterinary Medicine. Founded in 1885, the college is ranked fifth in the country by U.S. News and World Report. Eighty-five percent of Ohio veterinarians graduated from Ohio State. More than 7,000 alumni practice in all 50 states and in 40 countries around the world. The college works to keep the world's food supply secure and safe and supports agriculture, Ohio's leading industry by protecting animal health and productivity. Its research produces medical breakthroughs and therapies that benefit both animals and people, including the commercial success of the feline leukemia vaccine and recently diagnostics for tick-borne diseases. Exciting advancements like these made the Veterinary College Ohio State's leading producer of commercialization revenue in recent years. The college's Veterinary Medical Center provides expert care to thousands of animals each year through its Hospital for Companion Animals, Hospital for Farm Animals, and the Galbraith Equine Center. With more than 27,000 patient visits annually, the Hospital for Companion Animals is undergoing a critical expansion and enhancement project funded entirely by private donations. Ground was broken in the fall of 2014 for phase one of construction that includes a state-of-the-art intensive care unit followed by advanced surgical facilities plus a larger, more comfortable lobby and waiting area for patients and their owners. Ohio State is the only university with seven health science colleges on one campus. 
faculty collaborate across all health disciplines and with hospitals, including nationwide children's, to advance medical research and care. Many diseases, including cancer, behave the same in humans as they do in animals. The college operates one of the nation's largest clinical trials offices to advance treatment of naturally occurring diseases in animals. People benefit from these research efforts as well. In the next decade, 70% of new emerging infectious diseases will be zoonotic, starting in animals and moving to people. This puts veterinarians on the front lines of surveillance and prevention to protect against disease outbreaks. The Ohio State College of Veterinary Medicine has taken a leadership role in the One Health Initiative, aimed at developing collaboration among the many disciplines dealing with human health, animal health, and the environment. Other global public health issues, such as the sustainability of the world's food supply for more than 7.5 billion people, and the impact of climate change, have an animal health component that must be addressed. The challenges that lie ahead are many. The interaction necessary among health professionals today requires reinventing how science and medicine are taught and practiced. The Ohio State College of Veterinary Medicine, its faculty and staff have pioneered these efforts. For more than 130 years, the college has advanced the field of veterinary medicine. It is a leader for today and tomorrow. You heard the term One Health in the video. The One Health initiative is the integrative effort of multiple disciplines working locally, nationally, and globally to promote optimal health for people, animals, and the environment. As you can hopefully tell from the video in this illustration, veterinary medicine is at the center of this inextricable link between animal, human, and environmental health. One Health is the umbrella under which numerous aspects of human, animal, and environmental health are contained. These two images more simplistically depict the interconnectedness of animal, human, and environmental health. You can probably imagine from these illustrations the important and central role of veterinarians and veterinary medicine in the One Health Initiative. As a veterinarian and scientist, and knowing the important role of veterinary medicine in the One Health Initiative, I think of this concept as the three Z's of One Health. So you're probably thinking, what do, you, do I mean by the three Z's? First, zoonoses. You heard in the video, or the, the recording I just showed, those are infectious diseases that are transmissible between animals and people. Second, zubiquity, which is the species-spanning approach to the health of people and animals that draws expertise from both veterinary and human medicine. More simplistically, I think of this as comparative medicine. And the third is zoea, which we'll come back to shortly. So moving on to the power of a pet. So how many of you have a pet or grew up with one? Go ahead, raise your hands. Wow, it looks like almost everyone here has had a pet. How about raise your hand if you've never had a pet? Not a single person. That's impressive. Actually, over 70% of Americans live with at least one pet or companion animal. In fact, more than three-fourths of U.S. children live with pets. And children are more likely to live with a pet than they are with their biological father or siblings. And children ages 7 to 8 rank pets higher than people as providers of comfort, self-esteem, and as confidants. Animals are such agreeable friends. They ask no questions. They pass no criticisms. So wrote George Eliot. This is a big reason we love them so much. I have been an animal advocate and caretaker since I was a young child growing up in, a, in rural West Virginia. Since becoming a veterinarian and equine surgeon, I have cared for countless animals in my career. However, one patient sticks out. While on faculty at Louisiana State University School of Veterinary Medicine, I treated a very special patient, a pony named Molly. After a tree fell into her barn and stall after Hurricane Katrina in August 2005, she was stranded in her stall for nearly 10 days before she was rescued, adopted, and taken to a nearby farm. Unfortunately, a few months later, Molly was attacked by a dog, and the power of the dog's bite crushed the blood vessels and effectively killed the lower part of her right front leg. Her veterinarian contacted me to inquire about the possibility of performing an amputation and fitting her with a prosthesis. 
And although skeptical at first, it was actually Molly who convinced me if there was ever a patient to do this on, it was her. And nearly 11 years later, Molly is still going strong. However, her purpose and role have changed. She visits children's hospitals, cancer camps, and elder care and veterans facilities and gives them hope and courage, letting them know it is okay to look and to be different. I will never forget the confident smile of this young boy who lost a leg to bone cancer or to the elderly, elderly veteran amputee who simply came to life when they met Molly. And of course, these were just two of the hundreds, if not thousands of people whose eyes have lighted up and big smiles have come across their faces when they have met and interacted with Molly. Molly shows us all the power of the human-animal bond. The human-animal bond refers to a mutually beneficial and dynamic relationship between people and animals that is influenced by behaviors that are essential to the health and well-being of both. In many situations, the pet is the most important and stable part of the family structure, perhaps the only good relationship a person has. We know that a woman caught in an abusive relationship will oftentimes not leave it for fear of what might happen to the pet left behind, and yet still few shelters will allow pets. Meet Bev and Roy, who I had the honor of meeting about one year ago in their respective homeless camps. Bev and Roy were homeless here in Columbus, Ohio, and would not accept housing or a shelter because they were unable to make their four-legged or take their four-legged furry family members with them. When asked, why not give up your pets to get off the street and into housing, they told me, I can't do that. I can't give up Boo Boo or Tigger. He's my family. That would be like me giving away my child. Now listen to that. People will not leave a situation of domestic violence or homelessness because of their pets. Now that is a powerful bond. An emerging body of research is recognizing the impact of the human-animal bond on individual, family, and community health. Researchers have coined a term for this phenomenon, zoea. Remember that third Z of the three Zs of One Health. Zoea refers to the positive health benefits, whether physical, social, behavioral, emotional, mental, and or psychological, for people who interact with a pet or a companion animal. Why does this matter? Because it is time for the healthcare community, from physicians to caregivers, health insurers to policymakers, to recognize the legitimate impact and value of animals on the health and well-being of people. Perhaps you're thinking, show me the proof. I'm confident that if you're not already a believer, the data and stories I share will convince you. Research, both empirical and a growing body of scientific data, has shown physiologic evidence of health benefits of pets on people, including hormonal changes, decreased stress and blood pressure, improved weight loss, decreased cholesterol and triglycerides, increased oxytocin levels, which is a feel-good hormone, among many other health benefits. Pets also increase our interaction with others. A pet is a conversation waiting to happen. Through them, we meet our neighbors and begin relationships. Billions of dollars are saved each year in the healthcare system when people are healthy, and animals play a vital part in that good physical and mental health. Let me tell you about just three of the many areas where animal interactions are making a difference. Autism, Alzheimer's, and post-traumatic stress syndrome. Autism spectrum disorder is a complex developmental disability with signs typically manifesting during early childhood and characterized by the inability to communicate and interact socially with others. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports the prevalence of autism has increased to 1 in 68 births in the United States and 1 in 54 boys. Perhaps each of you know someone directly or perhaps indirectly a family, friend, or colleague who has been touched by someone with autism. Take a look at this letter written by a 14-year-old autistic boy who was in a correctional facility in Marysville, Ohio and was being treated for physical, emotional, and learning challenges. This boy was given the task of training an abandoned shelter dog named Oswald so that Oswald would become adoptable. After this experience, he wrote, Oswald is lovable because he give hugs, he really nice, and he like kids. Oswald look like a fuzzy bear. He play really nice, and he run really fast. He does not bit 
and Oswald is like six year old. Oswald need a family because he need a lot of love. Oswald is fun to play with and he need a family that care at him. He loved to be around people. Oswald is funny and Oswald is a dog that listens to rules. Now isn't it ironic that the very things he identified and describes in this letter that Oswald needed to become adoptable were the very things he needed as a child but did not experience. Family, love, fun, being around people, and a set of rules to follow. Oswald gave him a chance for a better life. And this is just one example of why I have become so passionate about the human-animal bond. The results of studies of people with Alzheimer's or dementia are remarkably similar. Nearly five and a half million people in the United States suffer from Alzheimer's and millions more have other forms of dementia. So how do pets or animals assist people with dementia or Alzheimer's? They offer companionship. Dogs in particular are natural born listeners, providing positive nonverbal communication and animals can reduce anxiety, agitation and aggressive behavior. This is Alan when he was 78 years old. He suffered from non-Alzheimer's dementia and was participating in an equine assisted therapeutic intervention study with others who visited horses regularly. After the visits, he would repeatedly ask, when can we go see Jack? Can I ride Jack? Can I have Jack? While he could not remember many things, he never forgot this horse experience. Even four years later, when on his 82nd birthday, Alan asked, when can we go see Jack? Can I ride him? Can I have him? So you can see that the human animal bond is powerful at any age and mental capacity. Post-traumatic stress syndrome or PTSD is a psychiatric disorder that can occur following a traumatic or life-threatening event such as military combat, natural disasters, terrorist incidents, serious accidents, or physical or sexual assault. Nearly 8% of all Americans and over 30% or more of veterans will experience PTSD sometime during their lives. It has been shown that veterans paired with a service dog have fewer psychiatric symptoms of PTSD, better interpersonal relationships, and less substance abuse require fewer medications and or lower dosages than veterans without dogs. Meet Ryan, now a second year student at the Ohio State College of Veterinary Medicine. I first became acquainted with Ryan during the admissions process in the winter of 2015. I remember reading his compelling personal essay. With his permission, I will share his story. He grew up in West Virginia with a Cocker Spaniel named Jim, his confidant for 11 years, and experienced true grief for the first time when his dog passed away when Ryan was only 17. Restless for adventure, he joined the Army, and during a deployment to a war zone, he suffered serious injuries that resulted in his medical retirement from the Army and to a diagnosis of PTSD. He said, I recovered physically, but there was damage that would take more than medicine to heal. Watching him struggle, Ryan's mother gave him a life-changing gift, a runty Great Dane puppy he named Izzy. Ryan wrote in his essay, This dog saved my life. It amazes me how the bond we developed brought me back to life. Izzy got me through some difficult times. After Izzy died, Ryan's roommate noticed that Ryan was slipping backward and handling his PTSD. He told Ryan, maybe you should get another dog. And Ryan said, maybe I should. Together they found another Great Dane puppy and Ryan ironically and appropriately named his new companion, Maybe. Ryan is grateful that Maybe is helping him succeed in the rigorous and stressful demands of veterinary school. Now this puppy will become a big dog and not everyone can handle a Great Dane. Therefore, it is wise to consult a veterinarian about the right type of pet for a given situation to optimize the chances that positive health benefits are realized. Not everyone can have a pet for a variety of reasons. However, fortunately, it has been shown that you can benefit from intermittent interaction with a pet. Therefore, seek out opportunities and activities where you can interact with an animal, such as volunteering to walk dogs at the local shelter or just visiting friends or family who have a pet. Armed with this information, what can we do? 
Well, every one of us can tell friends and family about zoea and the good things a pet can do for us and our health, and there is scientific evidence to support it. Each of us can talk to our healthcare professionals and encourage change. Medical teams need to ask about pets as part of a patient's medical history because this has been shown to increase rapport and trust with the physician and healthcare team, and the patient will more likely share information important to their health. If they do not ask and you're <clears throat> If they do not ask and you're the patient, then share that you have a pet and it is an important part of your life. We can heighten awareness among the health professions regarding the value of incorporating a pet as part of a therapeutic or wellness plan since this has been shown to increase patient compliance. We can also ask our healthcare team how a pet can improve our health or that of a loved one. And finally, we can also encourage physicians to prescribe a pet or an interaction with one. Speaking of that, and on a personal note, in 2014, this prescription was written for me. Adopt two black miniature schnauzers and spend 10 minutes with them as needed to lower stress and anxiety. And that was some of the best medicine I've ever taken. Since adopting Travis Lincoln and Teddy Luther in December 2014, my life and perspective have changed dramatically. I'm less stressed, my priorities are different, and my personal and professional relationships are enhanced. Travis and Teddy make me laugh and smile multiple times a day, every day. Looking into the future, let's commit to helping the public, government agencies, health insurance providers, healthcare workers, and others to understand, accept, and embrace the importance and the power of the human-animal bond in Zoea. Please remember the power of a pet. I should probably pause here for a minute before continuing with the rest of the presentation and take a moment to officially introduce you to the two boys that inspired me to do a TED Talk as part of the TEDx Ohio State University series last year. At this time, please join me in welcoming Travis Lincoln and Teddy Luther. So you might be thinking, what is Ohio State doing in the area of human-animal interaction, or ZOEA, research? Well, at least seven of Ohio State's 15 colleges have faculty working in the area of the human-animal interaction and bond, and ZOEA, education and human ecology, food, agricultural, and environmental sciences, medicine, nursing, public health, social work, and veterinary medicine. Faculty in these and possibly other colleges at Ohio State are working collaboratively to study and understand the effect and impact on people of interacting with animals. The focus of the current studies of interest is on the effect or impact of these animals or pets on a variety of parameters involving vulnerable populations of people, including homeless, adult, and youth populations, elderly, low-income, and medically challenged homebound populations, people with Alzheimer's or dementia, and faculty and staff who are prone to burnout. There is much work and research to be done, and all that is really needed are the financial resources, since the human resources are all present here at Ohio State. I will now move on to describe some of the activities that the College of Veterinary Medicine's faculty, staff, and students are doing to help the pets of the underserved and vulnerable populations of people in the Columbus area through community outreach and engagement. These activities provide experiential learning opportunities for fourth-year veterinary students while serving these vulnerable populations of people by providing much-needed veterinary care for their beloved pets. We have an outreach medicine program where we work in collaboration with Life Care Alliance and Meals on Wheels and with Faithful Forgotten Best Friends and the Shelter Medicine and Surgery program that we work in partnership with the Capital Area Humane Society. Life Care Alliance provides services to assist of older adults or medically challenged residents in Franklin, Madison, and Marion counties here in Ohio. These services include home meal delivery, homemaker and home health aides, and health services from registered nurses and dietitians at their wellness centers. The primary goal of each of their services is to help seniors remain in the comfort of their own homes with dignity, which is where all of them really want to be. We began partnering with Life Care Alliance and Meals on Wheels about five years ago and provide the veterinary care for the pets of the homebound 
elderly, and medically challenged. Our fourth year veterinary students provide the care for these pets under the direct supervision of faculty veterinarians. It is interesting to note that many of the people that are served by Meals on Wheels and Life Care Alliance have at least one pet, which is oftentimes the most important thing in their life. We learned when we first started doing this work that the people were actually feeding their meals to the pets. So now pet food is also delivered to those uh, people with pets as part of that program. This Life Care Alliance partnership with the College of Veterinary Medicine is a win-win-win situation whereby we partner with them to serve the pets of the elderly or medically challenged homebound population while giving our students a wonderful learning opportunity where they can hone their clinical and professional skills while interacting with a different group of people that expands their awareness about the importance of civic responsibility and community service. These are some of the most inspiring and rewarding interactions our veterinary students experience. These are just two more examples of the hundreds of pets and people we've helped over the last five years through our partnership with Life Care Alliance and Meals on Wheels. You can certainly see by the expressions on the faces of these ladies how important their pets are in their lives. They are so appreciative of the work we do in providing care for their beloved four-legged furry family members and companions. We also started working recently with the Faithful Forgotten Best Friends, which is a 501c3 nonprofit established five years ago to help provide care for the pets of the homeless population in Columbus and Franklin Canaries. We began partnering with them a little over a year ago to provide the veterinary care to the pets by fourth year veterinary students, again under the direct supervision of faculty veterinarians. This is another win-win-win situation whereby we partner with Faithful Forgotten Best Friends to serve these pets of the homeless population while giving our students a wonderful learning opportunity where they continue to hone their clinical skills while interacting with this different group of people that again expands their awareness about the importance of civic responsibility. And these are just a couple of the hundreds of pets and people that we've provided veterinary care for through our partnership with FFBF during the last year. And again, much like that interaction and experience with Life Care Alliance, our students find these experiences some of the most meaningful and rewarding because by helping these pets, they are helping their loving and caring families who have fallen on difficult times. We have had a shelter medicine and surgery program since the mid-1990s that has been an integral part of our students' educational experience while also serving the community. To my knowledge, we were the first College of Veterinary Medicine to offer such a partnership program. This evolved into a core or required two-week rotation for all of our fourth-year veterinary students, regardless of their area of career interest. This rotation is consistently rated as the best rotation or near the top by all graduating classes. During the rotation, students have the opportunity to perform 20 to 25 or perhaps more spays and neuters under the direct supervision of a faculty veterinarian. This experience allows them to hone their clinical, surgical, and technical skills and build their confidence while also allowing more pets to become adoptable. We have been in partnership with Capital Area Humane Society for almost 10 years and what a wonderful win-win, mutually beneficial relationship and program we have built together. Here is just one example of some of the experiences our students get and the pets they help become adoptable during their shelter medicine and surgery rotation. We're looking at ways to expand our program and thanks to a most generous gift from the Stanton Foundation, we will be expanding our outreach medicine and shelter medicine programs to provide even more hands-on learning experiences for our students whereby they can refine their surgical, technical, clinical, and professional skills while building their competencies and confidence in serving a larger population of pets and people in need. We are so grateful and appreciative of the trust and investment by the Stanton Foundation in our program of building preeminence in veterinary general practice education. I should also mention that Blue Buffalo has been so kind and generous in donating thousands of pounds of short dated pet food for the pets of the homeless and also those pets at the Capillary Humane Society 
which allows both organizations to stretch their resources of providing care for more pets. Thank you for, for the all you do for us, Blue Buffalo. Our students organize and participate in their Oath in Action Day twice per year. This is part of a program by the American Veterinary Medical Foundation, which is meant to provide members of the veterinary profession the opportunity to give back to their communities outside the walls of the veterinary hospital. Our students have chosen Faithful Forgotten Best Friends the last few times for their service learning project. Here is a short video made possible by the American Veterinary Medical Foundation to highlight this important community service activity and the impact on the students and those people and pets served by them and Faithful Forgotten Best Friends. really hard to give a dog a sweater when that person has no coat. It's really hard to hand them dog food knowing that they don't have any food. We all do things that are outside of our mission to help these people. The Faithful Forgotten Best Friends is a 501c3 nonprofit that was founded five years ago. And its purpose is really to help the animals of the homeless and the low-income people here in Columbus. We're able to make sure that the animals are vaccinated and that they're fixed and that they're healthy. That's the big thing, that the animal is healthy so the person knows when that opportunity comes. Their chances are really good at this. We've built up years of relationships with these people. We've, we've seen their animals come in, and uh, we've seen them flourish. That animal loves them unconditionally, and the folks are really, they take good care of their animals. They really care about They walk great distances to get here with those pets. My name is Elvin Wells, and this is my fiance, Donna, and our dog, Angel. I got her from my niece, so we took good care of her for the last month and a half, and she's been in our life, she's been a joy. We came today to have her uh, looked at and find out what we need to do, and they graciously took care of all the jobs, and the nurses and techs have all been great. Hi, my name's Connie, I'm 49 years old, this is my cat Bobby, six years old, he's the best cat in the world. I want to I wanted to thank Connie, the, the founder of this program, and everybody that, that volunteered. You know, a lot of people can't afford to get their cats fixed or get them shot and stuff. And these are just like our children, you know. And uh, without this, we wouldn't be able to take care of our animals the best as we possibly can. So many of these people here today, they are willing to put their own health and their own needs aside for what their animals need. And I think that's something literally every single person can learn from, is just being really selfless and taking the time to care about someone else or an animal or the environment, whatever it is that you might be passionate about, is be a little less, a little selfless and go out and volunteer. Or I, that's a huge lesson I think I really took home from today, is just get a little less centric and really project and open myself up to new people and new opportunities. Like I said earlier, just seeing how happy these people are makes me, I would give up a weekend or a day just to see you do this a few times at once because it's the whole point of being a veterinarian is getting to see the smile on these people's face when you're able to survive for their animals. And I definitely do this again. This is Tom. He loves to eat his gravy. <laughs> now I want to move on and provide some uh, comments and context uh, with regard to our students here at the Ohio State College of Veterinary Medicine. 
The main reason the Ohio State College of Veterinary Medicine exists is to educate and prepare the next generation of veterinarians while also generating new knowledge to advance the health and well-being of animals. So I thought I would share a few points of pride about our outstanding students and share a few facts that you might not know. We do recruit the absolute best and brightest students. We have a large number of applicants, typically over 1,300, and those are for 162 seats. We generally seat the class with about 50% coming from Ohio and 50% from other states. And in fact, the class we just seated this, uh, that started this August, those came from 27 different states, including Ohio. Generally, there's about 80 to 85% female and 15 to 20% male applicants. And they come, again, with all sorts of diverse backgrounds and experiences. Currently, veterinary medicine is the most homogeneous or least diverse profession. There is much scientific evidence that shows the more diverse a team or organization, the better they will perform and the better solutions will be developed to address complex problems. I believe until our veterinary profession more closely mimics the communities and societies we serve, we will not serve them as well as possible, as well as needed, or as much as they deserve. Therefore, since becoming Dean, I have emphasized the need to diversify our profession and therefore diversify our classes. We implemented a more holistic review process, which means we look at each applicant more holistically, evaluating things in addition to academics, such as their life experiences, their background, their, their experiences, interactions with animals or veterinarians, but really looking them at unique individuals to see what makes them so different. We also implemented a mandatory implicit bias and diversity training for all members of the admissions committee and anyone associated with the admissions process including people who review and score the files or folders, and also everyone involved in the interview process, whereby we interview 450 to 500 of the 1,300 applicants. Let's move on to the economics of veterinary medical education. Some of this may surprise some of you. The in-state tuition for our students here at Ohio State is approximately $30,000 per year during the first three years and $39,000 in the fourth year because there's three semesters in that full fourth year. The class that just graduated, the class of 2016, had an average debt of $192,000 and starting salaries ranged from approximately $28,000 to up to $90,000 depending on the career path they chose and whether they decided to do an internship or go straight into practice or other career field. Now, the high tuition and debt load, you would think, is probably preventing people from, from actually pursuing this as a career. So why do so many people want to become veterinarians? Well, it's because of the passion they have for helping people and animals. And it's been shown that actually most people who go into veterinary school have decided they wanted to become a veterinarian since they were six to eight years of age. However, I believe the high tuition and debt load are likely preventing some people who want to pursue veterinary medicine as a career because of the economics of the profession. We have to make it more affordable and accessible to anyone who might have the desire to enter this wonderful profession and not just the ones who are wealthy or have the resources. This will require a multi-pronged approach, including reducing unnecessary costs and operating more efficiently, which we have been doing here at Ohio State College of Veterinary Medicine for many years. We also must increase state support of veterinary medical education, and we must increase scholarships through current use and endowment gifts, and finally, we must find a way, if possible, to hold tuition steady or to possibly even decrease it. Now, the Ohio State College of Veterinary Medicine is one of only 30 in the United States and the only veterinary school in the state of Ohio. So how does state support of veterinary medical education in Ohio compare with others? Well, I did a study recently where I looked at the amount of state support per student. And the reason for doing this is because each College of Veterinary Medicine has a different number of students. So in order to standardize it, we needed to look at it on a per student basis. In looking at that, and in particular in comparing the top 10 colleges of veterinary medicine, again, where we are ranked fifth, the range of state support in dollars on a per student basis 
ranges from $19,500 per student up to $56,000 per student, with a mean and median of $40,000 and $44,000. Any guesses where Ohio State is? Correct. Ohio State is at the very bottom of that range at $19,500 per student, which is less than half of the average of the top 10. That, to me, is pretty remarkable. And actually, when you look at the top thir or all 30 of the colleges of veterinary medicine, Ohio State ranks near the bottom of all of them, again, on the amount of state support of veterinary medical education on a per student basis. We must fix this problem. In closing, I hope you have found today's presentation informative and enjoyable and hope you've gotten a glimpse of the many things our college is involved with, from animal health and well-being to human health and much more. Our college is of immense importance, is a wonderful asset to the state, and is a great impact on the state and society, including protecting Ohio's number one industry, agriculture. In 2011, veterinary medicine contributed over $5 billion to Ohio's economy, and we anticipate that has only grown since then. Thus, we will be once again joining with the Ohio Veterinary Medical Association to work to have another economic impact study completed for 2016. If you are interested in learning more about any of these programs I have discussed and or are interested in becoming engaged with the college in any capacity, please contact me. My contact information is shown above, and you can call me or you can email me. And if you're interested in supporting the college in any way, certainly you can either call the number there or go to the website. At this time, I'd like to open it up for your questions or comments, and I really appreciate you and thank you for your time, your attention, and your interest.